All right, so reaction videos and how to make one using Shotcut. Now, this is going to be an interesting topic, so let's get started. So I don't have a lot of experience making reaction videos, but I do know what it goes to editing a video and like any other video, making a reaction video goes through the same process along with some tips and advice that I can give you to make that process even easier. Now this is a rough overview of the process that it takes in order to make a video, but when it comes to making a reaction video, this process can be a little bit different as well. Most of the time when I'm talking about this process, I always encourage you guys to make a script in order to make your workflow a little bit better, but in this case, videos that require your first-hand reaction like a reaction video does not really work well with a script because scripts are planned out in order to help you move the plot of your video forward however reaction videos people want to see your first-hand reaction to the thing that you're reacting to either if it's a video or any other type of media that you guys may be reacting to so in this case my advice would be to stick with your first-hand reaction of what you're reacting to because that's what people want to see they want to get to know you see your reactions and basically be true to yourself and have a personality it's really hard to fake a reaction and pretending to be someone who you're not. So I would just go with having your first-hand reaction and being genuine about it, as well as showing your personality when you're making these types of videos. Now we have come to the technical part of the video where I'm going to be showing you a rough outline of how you guys can structure your reaction video. And today I'm going to be using the Shotcut video editor program, but if you guys do not use Shotcut, you guys can take the same process and apply it to your own video editing program. But today we're using Shotcut and I want to show you guys what you guys can follow as an outline when you're making these types of videos. Okay, so we're in Shotcut right now and as you can see, I have chosen all the files that I'm going to be using for today's example on how to make a reaction video. Now, not all reaction videos are the same obviously other people have different formats and how they structure it but this is basically a general overview to give you an idea of how you can make your reaction videos and how to structure it when you're editing so as you can see i have all the files that i'm going to be using including two audio files and two video files and i have opened a separate track for each file so for now i'm just going to start with importing my audio file recording of my voice onto the first audio track and then that will leave me an extra audio track where i can put any sound effect or even a background music in order to complement with the video. From here, I am just going to go to my primary video clip. This is your video clip recording, which basically shows your face. And for now, I'm just using a random image I got from Google for a stand-in example instead of using any actual camera footage as this is just an example. So this is just a random image that I've gotten of a person reacting and I'm going to use it as for an example of what you guys would use. So you want to make sure that this is the first video file that you guys put onto the first video track because then we're going to use an overlay filter for the next video track to show your audience what you're reacting to. So for now, I'm just going to adjust all the little fine details such as the duration of the video clip and the duration of the audio files as well, just to match every single one of them. From here, I am just going to go to my second video file that I chosen, and this is basically going to be a stand-in for the video that you guys are reacting to, so your audience can see the video that you're seeing at the same time. So I just chose this random clip, and we're going to place it on top of our primary clip onto our second video track. And as you can see, if I put the cursor right on top, you can see that the only image you can see is our second video file that we put on top of our primary. So in order to fix this, we're going to make sure that you've selected that video clip that you're going to be using in order to react go to filters and then go to the size and position filter you can find this either on the favorite tab or on the video tab on the filters and as you can see there are many settings here but all you have to do is just go to the preview screen and basically drag on the corners and basically drag it down to an appropriate size whatever size you want to have it on so i'm just going to make it a smaller size so you guys can see your camera footage or the image in this case and you can see the actual video you're reacting to in an appropriate size so it's not that hard for your view to see when they're watching your video and your reaction but of course this is just a general outline of how you guys can structure your video of course every reaction video is different from one another in terms of spacing in order to match your actual footage with the audio of that video so this is just a really simple structure on how you guys can do in video overlay or image overlay so your viewers can see your reaction and the video you're reacting to all at the same time however there are some effects that you guys can add onto your videos to make it a little bit more polished and 
and that can be found in the filters tab. For as an example, you guys can do a simple fade in effect onto the actual video clip that you're reacting to and all you have to do is just select on that video clip or top video clip and just basically adjust it on the appropriate size that you guys want to have it. From here, you basically select that clip, go to filters, go to the video tab and we're going to choose the fade in video. And if you don't want a normal black to fade in video, you can basically hit the check opacity box, which will allow the video to be transparent at first and then fade in into a normal state on the video clip. So you can basically see it really clearly. And there are many filters that you guys can add, especially when it comes to audio. I know sometimes when we're recording and we listen back to our audio, it may sound too soft or too loud. So a good way to fix this is choosing your audio recording, going to filters and use the gain in volume filter. Then you'll have a basically little level that you guys can slide around and adjust the volume of that audio clip. You can do the same thing for your background music, which is really important because you don't want your background music to be too loud and distracting, drawing away from your video when you're actually talking. So you guys might want to do some volume adjustments when it comes to adding audio to your videos by adding these simple filters. Now, one question that I do want to answer in today's video, which is how can I get the footage of the video that I'm reacting to and add it to my video, which is a really good question. And there are many solutions in order to fix that. One of which you can basically go to Google and look for a YouTube video downloader. This will allow you to get the video and download it off of YouTube. But I do strongly suggest that you guys give credit to the person who made the video by giving either a shadow in your video or linking their channel in your description. And just be really careful when it comes to reaction videos. I don't really know how it works with copyright strikes or warnings, but I do suggest to make your video as unique as possible and add some elements to it so you guys can say it's truly your video content that you're actually creating. And when talking about this topic, there's also another question, which is how can I get camera footage of me reacting to that video as well? And like I said before, there are other types of solutions for that too. You guys can use an external camera that you guys may have lying around. You guys can use your phone and import your footage onto your video editor, or you guys can use OBS screen recording. As you guys know, I use OBS a lot when it comes to making tutorials like these. And I also have a video going over the best screen recording programs out there just in case you guys want to check that out. So the first thing you want to do is get OBS, which is really obvious. And from here, you just want to add a display capture, which you can find when you add a setting. So you want to go to the plus button. And once you got your display capture, you want to go to the plus button and just add a audio output capture and then just use the default. Now, this will allow you to record the actual audio of the video that you're reacting to. From here, you just want to go to the plus button again and click on the video capture device. This will basically allow you to add your camera or webcam or whatever you're using as an option when you're recording. And as you can see, there are many settings for this thing, as well as the devices integrated. Now, I don't have a camera, obviously. So in this little window, your camera should pop up and you would be able to see yourself. Now, when it comes to recording your audio, you can also do this with the OBS screen recording program as well. You can go to the settings and have your microphone selected. For example, if you have a Blue Snowball Yeti or Blue Snowball mic or any other external microphones, you guys can select that on these settings when you're actually recording yourself, or you can just record it separately using the Audacity voice recording, voice editing software as well, and just hook it up there. There are literally so many ways that you guys can record yourself, your audio, and the video that you're reacting to. So basically just choose what works for you. These are just some options I'm throwing out there for you guys to use. So this is kind of a rough outline when it comes to structuring your video editing needs, when it comes to making a reaction video or any other video of sorts. And I hope I could help you at least navigate the process of what it takes to make a video, especially a reaction video and how you guys can use your technical skills to make a reaction video by using the Shotcut Video Editor or any other video editing program of your choice. Now, if you want to give the Shotcut Video Editing program a try, or you're just looking for more tutorials on it in order to improve your video editing skills, well, I do have a full on Shotcut tutorial playlist just for you guys so you can see and improve your video editing skills. I also have so many other videos related to YouTube and video editing. So if you guys want to go check those out, just go to my channel, subscribe, and just click on whatever video you guys would want to see. And I'll see you guys over there. But that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.